Go ahead and walk back into that mud. Okay, went over back right there. Is a other step right there. Okay. How much do you weigh, Steve? 315 pounds. Okay. And we can see the boot prints, but your soft, mushy feet on the bottom are not leaving impressions in the mud. No. Interesting. I, I feel my feet spreading out, and I feel... This is real soft right here. You can't really see nothing, but if you just get plaster Paris poured over, you'd probably pull something up. Now, another shoe print. Nothing. This guy here gets really soft. Now, unless you probably step right directly in the mud, we're not going to get nothing off of you. So you can see where my toes were. Yeah. There's nothing there. Uh, now, right here's a real muddy spot. I know I'm going to leave something here. And you did. Well, see how small that is? You got big feet. What size are your feet? I wear a size 13 shoe, but my foot measures. Four inches by ten and three quarters inches long. When I'm flattened out, it's probably four. Probably had a black cat over here yesterday. We've got a great blue heron that's been like our mascot the whole time we've been here. And I think something came after him. You, you were saying you're on the road one night and you saw something black across the road, looked like a cat. Yeah, when I left here, I think the first night y'all was here, I was going down to the Trace, going back to the North Welcome uh, Station. Uh huh. And uh, it's a, a black cat, probably three foot tall. Uh huh. It was a. Uh, it ran across the road from the left to the right. It didn't look like a bobcat. Was it sleeker, like a like a panther look to it, not like a bobcat look or a panther? Yes, yeah, more like a, a panther look. More like a panther look. Okay. And uh, about probably a mile down the road, a cow ran out across. Yeah. And it, it didn't look. It didn't look like a cow, so I know it wasn't going no cow. Steve, what's your take on uh, the official stand here with Panthers and so forth in the LVL? Well, my my take on the official stand is is that they're 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 either lying about the truth or they're just not aware that they have got black cats not just here in the LVL but in Kentucky, uh, and these cats are not domestic cats. They're not bobcats. They're bigger. They're, I mean, they're, they're bigger in bulk. Uh, their ears are rounded. And I, I didn't know it till I noticed that the common house cat, the ears are pointed. These cats have got round ears. Uh, very sleek looking. They're, they're thin and they're tall and they're lanky. And her tails appear to be as long as her body. More of a panther, then. Yeah. Definitely more of a panther. What I'm saying, they look like a panther. What, what size tracks have you... I know you were casting some tracks down here, too, with, with the panthers. I found I found cat big cat prints that I can take my hand and do it like this, and they fit perfectly inside. Okay. And the reason I know they're cat prints is that cats retract their claws. Yeah. And these have no claws in them where all the coyotes and other their, the claws are in the in the track. And these have no claws in the in there. They've been retracted. And uh, the official the official stand for the state of Kentucky, as is mo most states around Kentucky, is that black cats, black panthers do not exist. They are
So obviously we're down here kind of in this swampy type area. Uh, tell us a little bit about Three Toes. And there's a long history about him. Okay. He's got five toes on one foot and three toes on the other. What do you suppose happened to his toes? I'm thinking that more than likely since this area was inhabited by people for years, that he either walked up an old, an old broken mason jar or plate glass, even a farm implement. He may have got the wrong spot and just got him nipped off. Okay. Like by a snapping turtle or something? No, like uh, walking. So this fire can be seen from outer space. Yeah. So what is the purpose of this fire? We're trying to get them to come home. Oh, the ones from outer space. Well, Elvis and them got picked up and they didn't come back yet. I'm still waiting on Elvis. You know the old saying, Elvis didn't die, he just went home. So, Alan, how did you get into looking for uh, strange creatures? Well, my stepson uh, was the one who kind of started it all. I, I had a, I had an interest in Sasquatch since I was a child, but unfortunately my dad, as good of a fisherman as he is, was not much of an outdoorsman. Uh, I think I camped once in my entire childhood, and that was on a, on a beach in the middle of a saltwater bay, so it wasn't much of an outdoor experience. But uh, when my son approached me back towards the end of 2007 and told me he was interested in Sasquatch, I thought I would let him have the opportunities as a child that I never had. So uh, I got on the internet and I started searching around and that's how I stumbled on the BFRO. And, Took him on a trip in, they were doing in South Florida in 2008. And, uh, you know, I remained a member of the BFRO for about nine months before I thought it was time to go my own way. And uh, we've been doing it ever since. So we're out here in the field. What you said come through. You hear anything yet? Not yet. Not yet. So uh, what got you interested in this kind of stuff? Steve. Steve. Tell you what, I, I thought this open field would uh, give us an opportunity to have something cross over and give us a thermal. I got a pretty, pretty good view, man, right into the tree line. Anything stirred, we would see. We would definitely see it. I thought about the open field to get us something that would cross in front of it. You got a pretty good view though, huh? Yeah, I got a real good view. It, uh, if there was anything staring that tried to break the tree line, we'd see it, we'd see it pretty quick. Would that IR set you back? Uh, six grand. Six grand? Yeah. It's probably one of the best ones we've got out here. Uh, I just hope it pays dividends, but I don't want to be one of those people that gets caught in a situation where they get a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to to get a good thermal image or good video and not have quality equipment to get a good image. I like the idea.